Uh, thank you, Mr. Rubert, for uh, being on the podcast. Um, it's, an, uh, it's a big honor. And uh, uh, yeah, like, to be honest, I, I, I just recently uh, came across your, uh, your work. And uh, I see in, in Dutch, it's called IOTP. Is that an international name? Uh, is that, and where does it stand for? Mm -hmm. Yeah, hello and welcome, Mr. Van Rossum. And it's, uh, yeah, it's also a pleasure for me that we meet for the first time here. Yes, IOPT, IOPT means Identity Oriented Psychotrauma Theory and Therapy. Right? It's both the theory and therapy, the T. So identity, it's oriented on, yeah, the concept of identity. Maybe we can discuss about it, uh, what I mean with that. Yeah. The other thing is uh, the psyche, the human psyche, psychotrauma. What is the human psyche? And of course, the question, what is trauma? Yeah. yeah. And my, uh, my understanding is that whenever you do a practice, it needs a sound a theory. That is, if your theory is half wrong, then also your practice is half, half correct and half wrong. And so I'm really uh, very keen to have a good and sound theory package available for my practice and I did of course develop this theory out of the practice and I'm constantly practicing every day and so I can prove like like an experiment you do an experiment whenever you do a good scientific experiment you have some hypothesis yeah and then you see will this be true proved that this is true or will be it be falsified and I'm yeah. always open for learning something new. Whenever I do a case work, it is for me like a scientific work to prove if my theory is, co is, is appropriate and correct, or if I can learn something additionally. And so this is during the last 20 years, I developed this body of, uh, of concepts of IOPT, identity, psyche, trauma, yeah, what is love, what is sexuality, what is the victim-perpetrator dynamic, and also what is the, the con connection between the, the, the psyche and the body. So these are also very important keys, keystones of my, my work uh, altogether. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I was, um, um, how do you say it? I was happy to see that uh, you also, uh, let's say, stand on the shoulders of uh, Dalke and Detlefsen, no, that's not true. That's not oh. true. For me, dark and deathlessness, they are very spiritual. Yeah. And for me, spirituality can be, must not be always, but it is, you know, the, 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 the range of spiritualism is, is very big. But it could also be that spiritualism is a trauma surviving strategy. Now, this is, we have to be very careful. Like the materialism that, that we have in traditional medicine is, in my view, also a trauma surviving strategy not looking, for example, to emotions, not looking to the human psyche, thinking that the body is the body without a psyche, without a soul, or what, what they call it. And is, if the, the body is mere machine or an object that you can read without uh, any respect on the psychological side. Yeah? And the, the same can be in spiritualism, that you treat yourself like as if you do not have a body. Yeah, as if you have an out, out of body existence and that your, your soul continues to live after your death or maybe before you are born, they, already your soul exists or you, will, you have former life. All, all these things, they are, they are uh, widespread in, in the realms of uh, spiritualism. So I I'm, I'm, would say I'm a, I'm a, a realist. I'm realistic in the, in the sense that as I say, I am a, do have a psychological realism. A, a realism that is based on the knowledge and understanding of us human being, how we develop on a psychological level. And the, 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 the psyche always is connected with the body. There is no psyche without a body, and there is no living organism. Only a dead body is without psyche, but all living organisms do have a psyche. Yeah. And so it's not only special for us human being that we do have a psyche. It's also uh, for every you, in, if a li living being, if every living organism, it must have a, a psyche in order to have the contact with the outside world. And so this is uh, then, as, as human beings, we do have a specific human psyche that is designed for the needs of humans. Yeah. This is my definition then, that the, the human psyche is a tool to 
process information for the needs of the human organism. And processing means you take in information, what's outside the organism, what is there, per perception, then you process what you perceive, that then means you feel, you're gonna transform perception into feelings and further transform feelings also into thoughts, in the, in the, in the mind, in the knowledge, a cognitive thing. And additionally, we do have, we have uh, in this tool, the capacity of imagination, the capacity of, of, uh, of storing memories. We have uh, also the capacities to connect the information with our actions, with the actions of our body. And we have in this also the capability of having a sense center that is called the eye, my eye, reference point. And also we do have uh, something like you call it, this is a free will where you can make decisions. So this is a very complex, the human psyche is quite some complex, yeah, because the human psyche not only can process information that come from outside, you also can process the information that coming from inside this quite complex organism. And so you also can reflect, yeah? you can make a reflection about how my work, my psyche works. And this is also very important to correct uh, uh, the, these processes because as we know, they become under the influence uh, they can become uh, uh, erroneous. They can can make mistakes. Can and have wrong perceptions. The feelings are not appropriate to, to what you experience, and your thoughts could be could, could be uh, not correct, and so on. And so we need also a self correction tool in in within the psyche. And this is the end. What we what what you are doing when you're doing psychotherapy, we make self corrections, auto corrections for the psyche when the psyche is somehow and then we come to this concept of trauma is traumatized because if you're traumatized this processes that helps you with your psyche to fulfill your needs and the needs are in the first hand self-preservation and also the need for procreation this is two two different needs we have as human beings and under the condition of trauma this psyche that normally works properly fantastic a fantastic tool yeah really <laughs> a big big tool that you serve our needs but under the influence of trauma it can be devastated in a big big <laughs> in big uh, big amounts yeah. and this is what we, we then we we see then we see that the people have severe difficulties in 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 their life yeah how how they how they live how they live together how they yeah also all all sorts of illnesses and all sorts of um, uh, relational problems. And then, yeah, then we need help because yeah. under the condition of trauma, this autocorrection of the, of the site does not really fully function. No, no, no. A and you created um, your own uh, form of psychotherapy. Uh... Over the years, yeah. you, over the years. Uh, the, Can you tell cost because I didn't start with something quite completely new. I started uh, like a traditional psychotherapist with knowledge of uh, cognition and, 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 med and, and uh, knowledge is about psychiatric diseases, illnesses, and so. And then I come in to uh, 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 learn something about um, uh, Carl Rogers' approach of, 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 of uh, the, the self and, and the, 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 the talking therapies what you normally use. Yeah. And, and then I came across the, the, the constellation work in 1994. And I learned a lot how, uh, how you can, uh, with this resonance principle, you can get access to very deep uh, levels of the human psyche, unconscious levels. Yeah. And so step by step by the year, over now 25 years, I have developed my own approach maybe that is in the moment really unique that was never before but it has many components for mother's theories no? bonding theory peter levine's trauma theory Bessel, Bessel von der Kolk's understanding of trauma so i collected a lot of uh, knowledge that is already existing to bring it together in something maybe that is unique and what i now call the iopt the identity oriented psychotrauma therapy yeah, and, and uh, be, I, I've I heard of uh, family constellation. Is that what you call it in English? And uh, you uh, 
to also a form of constellation, but then with I did, I did, I started, I started with that. I, ta I started with that from 1994 to nearly 1998. I followed this approach that is called family constellation. That was the founder was Bert Hellinger, who is already now deceased, yeah. and uh, then I, I I learned that the method using other people using you, for example, uh, as a fam family member, and they can, when I say you are maybe by my father, you can reflect something from him without knowing him, yeah. but you could do it. Yeah, yeah. Could, me, could, give, could, could give me information. So this is so grandiose yeah, that even you don't know anything about my family and you are named as a family member, you reflect something that's really true. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's unbelievable. It's an unbelievable thing. And so I learned that. I have to continue to go on with this method. Although I did not trust any longer what Hellinger and others said about the family and the concept of family, the concept of the soul. It was for me too spiritual, yeah, in a way. It was not in accord with um, what I know elsewhere. And so taking bonding theory and trauma theory, combining this with this fantastic method, yeah, using others as what I call, we call in this time res, uh, representatives, now I call them resonators, uh, using the resonance principle. It's so deep, you, it's, go, it's going so deep in the, in, 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 in the human psyche, even, and this is what I have developed over the years, even the first moments of our existence, the first moments in, in the ut in utero, we can come there with the help of resonators and you learn a lot about What's in the end, of course, stored inside you because it's all there. Yeah, the yeah, organism yeah. is a big, it's a big container of all your uh, all your experience, life experience, especially of course those life experiences that are important to you, and the trauma life experience is, is important. You can't forget it. It is. Yeah. It will be stored inside you, and so you can bring it out. And though this um, <laughs> resonance method, yeah, the method how I work is like as if you bring the inside out and outside. Yeah? And if this was hidden inside you, in your cells, in your organs, in your brain, but this you can make visible by the help of resonators. Yeah, and this is unique, it's really unique. And, and it's, uh, you use it by um, uh, saying a phrase and then you have um, resonators who stand for every word. Yes, uh, over the years, of course, I have developed this, uh, this specific methods from uh, condensing in even more. In the beginning, we had one sentence, and when yeah. we used a person re representing this one sentence, only one. And then we had uh, up to 20, because there were a sentence with 20 words, and then we, for every word we used uh, resonated. And then we learned, of course, that one thing is too, too less, the other thing is too much. So how to find an optimum? And so I reduced, reduced from, from seven to five to four. And now I'm with three maximum. I offer people maximum three resonators, so three words, concepts. And the tendency is already going to two. No? For example, when I'm doing uh, resonance work, I do it for myself. I have done today, I have one I have already done uh, with eye and my tooth pain to see what's behind this. And uh, it's, 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 it's enough. Yeah. Only two with two. And normally I, I, I take the eye in and then something else. And it's so, it's, it's so uh, enlightening. Wow. You get so much information. And you yeah. come, what is very important, you come to the point, you come to the emotions, you come to really do what it's behind me. I, I learned I learned so much. I learned so much about my, the whole uh, region here of my, of my mouth, the, 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 the chin, and so it's, and it, I feel much freer. I did it, uh, it, it about around about 12 o'clock this day, and I feel so much relieved since then. Amazing, amazing. And then you, uh, every word, do you need a person for it to resonate, or, or can you take as a, as a therapist uh, every time a certain role? How, do you need more people? No, no yeah, of course I've tried it out in, in all variations. And the one thing is the group situation, and the one thing is the, the individual, individual therapy. Okay. And so in group situations, you, you, you make a choice whom, whom to ask for resonance. 
And I, as I work with bigger groups, you have a lot of options for, for someone to resonate and surely you find the absolute pro appropriate person. For it. And uh, on the other hand, I do it also in individual work. And then I ask people uh, to find, uh, let's say, some objects around them. Or in my therapy room, I have uh, patterns, floor patterns that they can use, make use. And, it, and then you go yourself, yourself go into resonance. You, 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 you put it in, if this is the cell, my cell phone is my eye, then I take, maybe I, this is in front of me. I like my, I, I put my hand on it and, and, and resonate with it. Or you stand on the floor, have low markers, stand on the floor and, and go in the, the, the resonance with that. And you feel what's coming up and it works fantastic. You know, within seconds, you could change completely. In your inner states, you can put in a second of a moment. You could be in a in a trauma state, yeah, uh, showing something. What is what's what's behind uh, your, let's say, your symptoms? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm a bit interested. In why I was um, emailing with Rupert Sheldrake uh, this week about uh, morph, morpho morphogenetic resonance. Mm -hmm. uh, why did you choose the word resonance? Because it is, uh, it is resonance somehow, I would say. It's resonance. I'm sending out information. No? I'm the one who is, is, the, is the sender. And then I ask someone else to be the receiver. I ask you to be the receiver for, for example, my eye or my tooth pain. And then there is a process of it's information goes to you and information goes from you to me back. Yeah, this is resonance. You... You, uh, um, I can make use of you if you agree as as a resonance, like yeah, like like a mirror. But you, you're more than a mirror for me. Yeah, you're a living mirror. Yeah, exactly. It's not mirror. Well, I'm asking this because I did family constellations once, and um, I became somebody's uh, family member, and it felt like um, uh, something. Well, this sounds too too big, but it's something took over or, or, or some, some information came into me or something. It yeah, was more than just standing there. Yeah, I said, you see, no, when we speak, yeah, now we speak, you, you hear, my, hear my voice, maybe looking at my mouth and you understand what I'm saying. But it's much more. It's much yeah. more that uh, an information that is sent it up on my whole body. And the same is much more that is sent it up by you. And as we do, <laughs> it's very interesting. Meanwhile, because of Corona and all this nonsense of lockdown, so but we have to do now more, more, more online work. But it works also there. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 because it's information. Yeah, yeah. I send out information, and if you like a receiver, say, okay, I'm now program number channel number one of the, of this TV, then you you can send send me something back that is mine. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, but for me, this is uh, the simplest model I, I have in the moment. It's like you send a receiver, and the only thing is that you are willing to receive. You have to say, I, I turn my receiver on. Yeah. And this is, of course, normally we, we have to protect ourselves by not turning our receiver on, no? or only temporarily. Yeah? But most of the time, otherwise, you get crazy. Yeah, if you yeah. would all the time have you receive and receive everything but from mothers and be, be the sender of sending them, them this information back the, it's, it's not possible to live like this but we see this is a, an option we have yeah we can receive and for example a baby when the baby is very small it needs to much of uh, receiving of mothers the information that it comes from the mother uh, in order to to grow and to develop. Uh, the baby is dependent on receiving. Yeah? And the, the older we become, the less we need this immediate re receiving uh, actions and the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the resonance. Huh? But as a baby, you are completely in resonance with your mother. Yeah, yeah no, totally. So um, it, by this method or therapy form, you, you, you've created a, 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 um, a way to communicate with the body. Also, yes, of course. But, but you, you see, the body is nothing separate from the psyche. Oh. For me, the psyche is not the brain yeah? oh. or, or, it's, or the nerve system. It's every cell has a psyche. Why? Because every cell can process information, can take, perceive information, process them and sense information. So that means 
already at the beginning of our life, when there's a sperm and egg cell and they put in, it's not only mere just uh, material things. So it's already information processing. And our information in our psyche, the development of psyche, starts in this moment. And so the, the psyche and the body are not separate. No, no. On, only under the under, under, the, under the, the, the condition of trauma. If you are traumatized, then there becomes a separation process between the cells and your conscious processing of information. It separates because it is a protection mechanism because the information that comes in would destroy the cells, would destroy the organs, or would destroy the whole organism. So you have to find a way, a tricky way. How can I separate the dangerous information that comes in from the rest? And then it seems as if you have a body that has no consciousness, and you have a consciousness that, have, that, that doesn't have body. And this is then the dualism we have in our thinking, or in traditional medicine, in philosophy, the traditional, uh, the, 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 the separation, the dualism, here is the body, here is the, mo- the mind. And then, of course, there's a riddle. How does it come together? And <laughs> so then a, a, a lot of uh, pro- unsolved problems you have, solvable problems you have afterwards. But this is, if you see it right, and you see, okay, under the condition of trauma, it has to separate. And then the question of therapy is how to, how to join in again, how to me- reconnect it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I suppose this dualism uh, has started from people who've been traumatized. Uh, yes, I, this guy, he, I think as far as I heard, he lost his mother when he was two years old. Who lost his mother? Descartes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, there you go, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah, so this, you can see it. Uh, the, the, those who are making such fears, I think Buddha also, wasn't, wasn't something with Buddha's mother also that he... <laughs> yes. I wouldn't think of Buddha as being traumatized. Well, I guess he was, eh? Yeah. Yeah, Who, yeah Jesus. Wasn't he traumatized? <laughs> yeah, Jesus was traumatized. <laughs> of course. He doesn't know the father, eh? And he ended, ended, up, ended up in the crucifix, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Betrayed by his own kind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I was thinking about uh, um, societies being traumatized. Uh, um, it looks like uh, the United States, uh, they have a lot of aggression in their history and they, they chose, uh, before Biden, they chose a, a bully, you can say, as a president. Uh, do you think uh, societies are traumatized? Can be traumatized? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Biden also lost his wife or his son or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah, he's also severely trauma. And uh, uh, yes, I have written a book that is called Who Am I in a Traumatized and Traumatizing Society? It's also translated into Dutch. You okay. know. Um, and this, yes, this was, my, uh, was what I learned more and more because when I started this uh, uh, study of trauma, I thought, okay, it, it happens. It can happen. It, up, up and then it can happen that there's somebody else, some people are traumatized. And more and more learn how difficult it is maybe to find someone who is not traumatized. Mm-hmm. And that, of course, has a reason. The one, the one reason, the obvious reason is, think about Europe. You don't have to go to, to the United States. Think about Europe, how it's, it's a history of wars. Yeah. It's a history of wars. Yeah. And think about Dutch, uh, the Netherlands, who was not traumatized in the Second World War, in, 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 in Netherlands, could it be that someone is not, has not been traumatized by the war it, in itself? And then think about how these uh, conflicts between men and women, how much violence is in this relationship, how much betrayal. Yeah? And think about how people treat their children, yeah. Yeah. How, what they do with their children, neglecting yeah. them, beating them, uh, not ignoring them, uh, them and all the things. Yeah, that yeah. the history of, of the of the of the childhood is a disaster. Yeah, even those who are have been kings, and so they were treated absolutely badly by their mothers and fathers. Yeah, and only only maybe some since some years or decades, we, we think about it. How could it be that this child had so specific needs, and we have to take care about children? We have to respect their you have respect them as as a person already a person that is not only a, a thing that we, what you can do 
<laughs> with every, everything we want and so and uh, yeah slowly we understand it and only then i would say we have a chance not to continue with traumatized civil societies and step out of this uh, vicious circle from one generation that the traumatized uh, children become afterwards traumatized parents that again uh, produce traumatized children they become traumatized parents yeah well, well i like to believe that um I've, I have my traumas and my parents have traumas before them, but I like to believe that I'm raising my kids a little less traumatized than I have been. And I think my parents also did the same thing. Do you think we are uh, evolving, uh, progressing? If I look at the momentary situation, not. Ah. It would not be possible but that, have, that we do have this corona, corona pandemic with all this craziness that's happening in the moment, with all the craziness that is been done to children worldwide. Think about it. What it is <laughs> to, to force children to wear this mask, uh, to, to, to in, imprison them in their home, to, to separate them from, from playing with others. It's a massive traumatization of children. And our, no, not so many parents say, oh, no, don't do it with my children. They say, OK, we have to do it. They have to send them to school with a mask. And so no, there is no sensibility. There's, a, there's still, there's still not empathetic behavior, not really truly em empathy, because the people are not empathetic with themselves because they have not been treated empathetically. And then they, they do not notice if they are just rational, they are in their mind, and they force the rules, you have to follow the rules and do that. Uh, I see it, it's so widespread. Of course, on the other side, there are, there are many now that wake up and say, oh, Hey, what, what are we doing with the children in the moment? Stop it, yeah? This nonsense. Yeah. But the majority still is in favor of the rules. Yeah. Well, okay, maybe. And traumatizing the children. Yeah. So maybe there's still trauma, but there's also a lot more te therapy, maybe. Another thing is uh, to, 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 to look very, to, to see what, what it means traumatizing children. This, the one thing is birth processes. So many children are traumatized in the birth process by cesarean section and forced. Uh, and a lot of violence is, is, is done to the, to, to the mothers. 30% of, in, in Germany, I don't know how, how much in, in the Netherlands, 30% of cesarean sections, 30%, a third of all born children and mothers are only by the birth process tra traumatized. Yeah, nobody, right. nobody takes notice of it. No. You know, there's, um, the definition of trauma is the two things, two factors, if you define a trauma. The one thing that is happening, what you then experience, uh, the violence you experience, whatever. And the second thing is if somebody confirms you that you have been traumatized, there's something wrong has been done to you. Yeah? And if at least the second thing is that people say, oh yeah, oh my God, we have traumatized you. And my, my dear, what can we do for you? Then it is less worse but if these two factors come together you are traumatized and nobody acknowledges it this is the worst thing that can happen and this is what it is done in traumatized society it's the most taboo thing is trauma i see it when i make lectures in my university the, the people the, the student being i know he's a trauma therapist and for him trauma is in this in the focusing center and so they try to convince me that i'm wrong he can't be right uh, students in the second year of the, their study, I'm 25 years, 30 years, I'm an expert in that. And they come and they, they try to convince me that I'm that they are right and I'm wrong. And then see, this is a, also a symptom of a traumatized society. You do not want to acknowledge trauma. Yeah, yeah. As long as we, we, we do not do this, we continue traumatization and not knowing it. And in a way, what we say, normalizing trauma. No trauma becomes the norm. That means also that you take little children with six, seven months old after birth, put them in the in the kin kinder crib, crash for for the whole day. And do you think that they can survive it without without splitting? Mm. How crazy it must you be to believe that that a little child can be autonomous, <laughs> be without the mother the whole day? Okay, true, true. So. Yeah, we are still a, a traumatizing society. Um, well, I, I talked to a Buddhist teacher before and he said, 
trauma or suffering is a, a gift for growth. And nothing nonsense, yeah. This is not, <laughs> all this, all this, this nonsense things, yeah. All the surviving strategies, yeah. Not acknowledging traumas. At least, it's the same thing when my students say, "And Mr. Robert, what about resilience? Resilience. This is the key point. With resilience, you can't, you can manage everything, yeah. Without and this is you. Those those ideas they do not want to, to know the suffering. They do not know, want to really deal with it. Always having some intellectual ideas, how to not look at, how to not look at what's really happening. Okay, okay. Well, I, I thought that was an interesting uh, history, uh, way of looking at it, um, because I mean, I have my traumas, and I've been working in it for, for working. I've been in therapy uh, now and then, uh, on and off, and uh, I was always trying to fix myself. And uh, when he said it to me, I realized that maybe um, I shouldn't be trying to fix myself, but uh, try to evolve or grow. Yes, of course, of course. It is, it, I, my, my, my therapy is also not about fixing something, but the first thing is, is that you admit that you have been traumatized. They had that your body and your psyche got a severe damage and mostly, and this is the, the, I think the most painful thing is, mostly the, 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 the damage was done by your parents, especially by your mother. Your mother is the one that you love most and you want to be loved by her, but she's the one because of, out of a trauma, she cannot give it. You can't give it the, the love that you need as a baby. And this is the, the big dilemma that the, the biggest perpetrator that traumatizes you and it's not only you, but in, in my case, it's the same. And millions and billions of people in the world, our mother is the main perpetrator, the, the, the person that traumatized us the deepest, deepest. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> the mother. Um, yeah, but, but I mean, uh, I, I, uh, for me, uh, I'm, I, no, um, a lot of people, I think, or I meet, so people I meet, um, I mean, I know I, I've been adopted, so that's been told to me, so I know my biggest trauma, and uh, it's also very clear in my all my actions, but I always knew that that was the, 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 the topic to work on. Uh, but I, I meet a lot of people who say, who think they have been, or they don't know what their trauma is. They've been raised by good parents, they have never had any fallouts, and Still, they have marks of trauma, but they can't reach it. Mm -hmm. The same with me. Until I was about, let's say, 35, 40, I thought I had a happy childhood and on, on the countryside and was all fine. Unless I, I, I stepped in in this process and learned, it was about four times I nearly died in the until the first year after birth. And what, of course, was the most uh, awful thing is uh, that I wasn't wanted at all, yeah? that my parents were young, they wanted to they wanted to be together, we have a couple of relationships, they wanted to have sex, and I was <laughs> quite quite too early uh, uh, there. And so I, for them, I was just, uh, just an obstacle, something that disturbed their love relationship. And <laughs> when they had sex and I was there and was crying, then my father uh, went to me in the bed and cried to me, I should be silent and so. <laughs> because he wanted to do sex with his wife and so this is one, one thing that came out today in my, my process still yeah that mm. i should be silent and clinch your teeth and oh, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 and suppress your anger also yeah, and, yeah. Uh, but you have a method for people to find their hidden traumas mm -hmm. yes yes yeah, I, I, everyone yeah. everyone who, who wants you really i can promise promise you if you're ready if you really want to explore your background, you explore your identity. Yeah? Because I define identity as the sum of your life experiences from the very beginning when you started to learn until now. And if you really want to explore your biography, with my method, be sure you can find out. Wow. You do not need any documents, you do not need any reports from parents, but you can find out, even if, I don't know if you know your mother at all, but, but you yeah. could find out how it was for you in her womb. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, I've been, I've been regressed back into the womb and uh, 
I have seen enough for now, thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. but uh, that's amazing. Birth birth test, you can find If you want to find out your birth, you can find out. With yeah. my method, you can find it out. Right. So, so on a bi biological uh, or physiological way, how, how does it... Uh, um, how does it stick in your body? Does it is it in your in your in your connections, in neural brains, or is it in every cell? In every is cell, it, it, yeah. it, it is in every cell, and the cells that build organs. Then there are parts of your body. Of, 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 what today, my, let's let's stay with this example of my tooth. Yeah, yeah you have your tooth, and you have your jaws, and in every it can be that in every single, for example, my wife did a. Had uh, had uh, some some skin thing coming out suddenly, yeah, and she made of course she made an uh, operation, put it away, but it didn't it didn't really heal. Then I tell, told her, look at it, maybe behind there is a trauma. And there was a trauma behind, yeah. So in every even minimum things, it can be that it, in this is a symptom. It seems not so important, but of course there are other important like cancer and whatever you can have. But behind every body symptom is an information a body symptom in the end what normally is called illness it's a wrong thinking somehow because first of all it is an information information given you from the body an information that is not otherwise expressed for example if i close clench my teeth and suppress my anger yeah then my anger is not expressed and we know this since long from psychosomatic the every every Emotion that is not expressed expresses is in a physical symptom, yeah. and so this is uh, yeah. <laughs> with every with every part of every part of your body can give you information, and of course, it is connected. The part of the body is connected with the type of trauma. For example, if you have some uh, symptoms in the sexual region, of course, it has to do with sexual trauma. Yeah. yeah. And the symptom of my, my, my wife's uh, hand, it was because her mother, when she was one year old, she had a car accident. And the mother went to the hospital and was separated. And then my wife was separated for two weeks from the mother, for a baby, it's absolutely long, two weeks, absolutely too long. Yeah. And yeah. when the mother came back, the mother, of course, had still, they broke her arm. She still had uh, the trauma energy in, in her arm, in the left arm. Wow. And it wasn't a process, of course, only we had medical treatment, but not psychological treatment. And then she came home and she couldn't take, even when she was home, she couldn't take her daughter up because it was too painful. It was too painful. It was too much trauma energy in this, and anxieties of the trauma, the, the shock trauma was still in the arm. And then what happened, the child, my wife is a one-year-old baby, she resonated with this anxieties the panic of the of the car accident and so she carried inside her a type of panic that resulted from the connection she, of course she wants to connect with the mother this is the reason why you go on to receiving you turn on receiver you turn on receiver because i want my mama i want to connect with her i want to emotionally connect with her and so in this you take as a child the trauma energies of your parents or your mother especially your mother in and then after after years maybe you have panic attacks and even do not know why do you have panic attacks and not knowing that this panic attack is a result of the car accidents of your mother. And then the, the, the process of the work with my wife to, to separate this. And for her, it was a big relief, big relief after she shaked her body. She never felt, felt like this, so free like this before because whenever she was alive and then the trauma energy is all triggered. And mm -hmm. so then you reduce your liveness. You reduce your the way of, 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 of expressing expressing your bodily needs or you you get stiff. Yeah. yeah. Because whenever you oh, then the trauma uh, trauma of the mother, the trauma and chief the mother, then you're confused also. Yeah? yeah. And this is a very important part of my uh, work. I also uh, uh, offer can offer that you become an adult but only you only are an adult really you're no longer entangled with your mother emotionally entangled with your mother otherwise you stay a child all your life wow and this is 
<laughs> of course, because this so it doesn't happen so so often, yeah. Then we have these infantile societies, we have these traumatizing societies, because these are not really grown-up people, grown-up parents, grown-up teachers, grown-up politicians, grown-up uh, economic leaders, they all are infantile because they're not separated from their mother. Yeah. And those, though they repeat their, their childhood trauma again and again in the relationship with others. Yeah. The, the trauma keeps them in their childhood. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's funny because um, I, when I was, I was always very insecure. And uh, when I was, when I was turned 30, I, I would assume that some adulthood would come over me and would, would rid me of this insecurity, but that didn't happen. No. And now no. I just recently turned 50 and I did some EMDR sessions before that. And I've, I'd, I told everybody that how now I finally turned an adult, but I also, I feel not that much more that insecurity and I don't feel that anxiety anymore. I always used to have. So <laughs> that's interesting to hear from you, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but you're right. Infantility. Yeah. So there is, uh, we were talked about uh, trauma, traumatized societies. I mean, it's impossible in this society with uh, with the way people give birth and and, and all that that it's impossible to be not traumatized. Yeah, because we are not we are not aware of it, and we are this this is there's so much fear. Of course, if you're traumatized and you do you survive there yeah, somehow? You survive, of course. You think now I'm. <laughs> I'm, I'm safe here and I have to just to suppress things and then everything goes well. Uh, but this is an illusion. Oh, but the, the fear, again, being confronted with the pain, the anxieties, the, the, the pain of being left alone, and, and it's so big, yeah? And it's it's too big to, to, yeah, to, to, yeah. to deal with once. And this is also something uh, what we as trauma therapists may be very careful, slowly give people time, respect their limits, so this is what we what we do because in a way we are then that good parents you never had before, the loving persons that are loving you and uh, taking you as you are, not forcing you, not pushing you, giving you the space and so and this of course can then encourages you, and also seeing the example from others, ah others can do it also. That's the reason why I like so much the group work, and then you are encouraged. To open up and okay, I can feel safe. And the most important thing of psychotherapy is to create a safe place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The individual situation or the group situation. What I have to do as a therapist is to create a, a place where you are confident with you try you try trust and say, ah, okay, this is a loving place also. A place where you feel loved. Yeah. Then you can open, then your trust start again to because you of course. If, if your mother traumatizes you, you're full of mistrust. Hey, whom else can you trust when you can't trust your mother? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the yeah, and that's also the the. the um, I think people don't recognize how these, how these. I mean, they think with traumas usually about about big stuff, explosions and uh, and uh, wars. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. these, these things, these are. Especially yeah. because they're in the start of your life that yeah. have such a big imprint, right? Yeah, at the beginning of your life, so so we are so vulnerable. Yeah, it's true. But um, I have a thousand more questions, but uh, it's late. And you you live in Munich, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, maybe one last question, if I if I may, um, um, a question I always ask: uh, What what in your opinion makes a good therapist? Many things. It's not only one. Many things, and one thing is, you have to deal with your own trauma. You have to have the courage. You have to, of course, of the opportunities to uh, deal with it. To to to. When I do trainings, I'm offering trainings, national and international trainings. Then my my concept is that I take those people who are really wanting to work on themselves, and of course, meanwhile. The people know when they come to me that they can work on themselves and others are not coming to me. That someone who would come to me only to learn some knowledge, he, he wouldn't, it would not be possible to, to, to be for a longer time in this way. So the, the preparedness to confront yourself with your biography and find out what is yours, it's a basic quality. Then 
I offer and you are offered theory, sound theory, very good theory that really <laughs> comes to the point. What is what is it all about? Yeah, and then of course practice, practice, many practice, and again supervision, and so all these things coming together. So over a long time, it's not from the first moment. You, it, it takes the lifelong experiences, and the, maybe uh, the older you are, the more you work on yourself. The, the more fluently you can work and the, the more people trust you and, and they know you do, you won't do, do any harm to them. But mm. of course, in the process of becoming something, somebody who is really experienced, you will make errors. Yeah. I did a lot of errors. I made a lot of errors. And of the most important thing is that you learn from your errors. Yeah, oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. And so you did also a lot of work on yourself. Yes, um, I, I, yeah. Every month I do work on myself. Okay, and is that a, a process or is there a finish? Are you some point trauma free? I, I don't care about this. Whenever I have some questions in my life, I, I make a self encounter for myself and always benefit from it. Why shouldn't yeah. I do that? I, every day I brush my teeth, so why shouldn't I do take for my psyche, care for my psyche whenever I have an option for it? That's a great, that's a great quote. That's great. Yes, <laughs> of course. Why not? You can. So why shouldn't you? <laughs> but that, that, uh, that, that, that comes from a big curiosity also, I think, into yourself, the psyche, the human. Absolutely. Absolutely. For me, I, I, of course, as a, as a, as a, as a pupil in, in, in my, my school, I, I thought about what, what to do professionally. And I could, did, uh, different options but now meanwhile I'm very happy uh, unconsciously of course about driven to psychology psych psychology and psychotherapist but my, I'm so happy I'm so happy that I'm not a medical doctor yeah. because this was on one of my ideas when I think how they work and well, how people come to them and I, they 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 should uh, uh, treat them uh, and help them and there's so much expectation on them that it's it's I, I wouldn't I wouldn't do it I wouldn't I can't couldn't do it yeah. so I'm um, so happy that I have this uh, opportunity, this is now this uh, position that I can say, okay, if somebody wants to come to me and work with it, I give you the space, I offer you, but it's up to you. If you want to become healthy, you can come healthy. If you do not want, it never will happen. I can't do it for you. I just wow. can't. Wow. I can accompany you. I can produce this safe space, the loving space you need. I can also offer you some resonators and groups and people. And but it's the eating to eat the, the, the table that is full of a lot of meals. It's up to you to eat it. It's not my it's not my job to do it. Great, great. Well, Mr. Rupert, thank you very much for your time. It was a fascinating talk, and uh, yeah, thank you, thank you. You also give courses in Holland. I can uh, put the text. Yes. Uh, yes, since many years, I have this uh, fantastic cooperation with Margaret Venting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she she invited me and invites me every every year. We have big events there, big lectures, big seminars. Now this with the pandemic, it's uh, we did it on Zoom, and um, also in Belgium. I have uh, in April. I have the next uh, Zoom meeting then uh, with IOPT work and Margaret Venting is organizing. Okay, well I will put a link in the bio then, uh, mm -hmm. so people can find you. And uh, yeah, and you say you mentioned also this is. Margaret Venting and her husband, Wim Wassing, they have translated all my books. So yeah. this is also a privilege for those who are speaking Dutch, that all my books are translated into, into Dutch. Oh, great, great, great. And uh, there's a couple of books out there, and I'm, I've just started to beginning to read them, and uh, they're fascinating. So thank you again for the great work, and thanks again for, the, for, the, for your time. And... Uh, well, we'll we'll see. We'll be seeing you on Zoom or in life uh, in Holland or Belgium. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Stefan, also for this inspiring talk with you and your openness also to show yourself. It's, it's also very helpful. Thank you.